This human being that puts his face onto the ground and worships the God, God Almighty, cannot be God. This is enough, enough okay. evidence. Okay, that's what you say, okay? That's your analogy. That's coming from your own understanding. Now, I believe God is great. In fact, I know God is great. And I believe God can do all things. So now, the question is, if God is so great, and we say that Jesus is God, why has he revealed himself in that way? Okay. So, okay, no, I'm gonna... I'm, okay, I'm, I'm gonna but is that your answer. question? Is that your question? I'm or? gonna answer it. I'm, okay. I'm, I'm gonna answer that question. Okay. Okay. Because you don't believe that God is like that. So God is showing to us. So when, that's why Jesus says, I have my own self, can do nothing. Why? Because it is God who is in him, in the flesh, who is doing it. So all that Jesus is doing is what God is doing. It was God in the flesh. So Jesus says, I of my own self can do nothing. So he's showing us the way to the Father. Even Jesus prayed to the Father. As it, it is written there, it's in, it's in the Bible. And his disciples says to him, show us how to pray, teach us. And he says to them, this is how you pray. Our Father, which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. You know the prayer. Thy will be done. Uh, yeah, thy, thy will be done. Thy kingdom come. Thy on, kingdom, yes. thy will be done. Thy will be done. On earth, on earth, yes, on earth, yes, as it is in heaven. Yes. Give us this day our daily bread, as we forgive those that trespass against right. us. Right. So, for thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory. Right. So now, what we see there is God in the flesh, Jesus Christ, revealing himself to us and showing us the way to follow the Father. Right, brother, that's very good what you just said there. Because what you're saying actually is this. Jesus is saying, I of myself can do nothing. What, what, and, and Jesus goes further, in fact. When he does the miracles, he says, I of myself can do nothing. I cure the lepers and bring the dead back to life with the finger of God, he says. I do it with the power of God, with the finger of God, right? What that tells you, brother, is this. What that tells you, he's constantly pointing to the Almighty Father, who is giving him the ability to do those miracles with his grace, with his giving, with his miracle. But he's saying, look, I of myself can do nothing. Everything is directed to the Almighty, which is exactly what all of the prophets did. Now, brother, what I'm saying to you is this. Look, humbly, what I would say to you, brother, what I would say to you humbly is this, yes? A God is not a God that prays to anything. A God is not a God that needs to eat, drink. A God is not a God that can be stripped naked and hung onto a cross and to be killed. This is not the definition of God. Well, this, this, is is, what... this is a definition of a, a weak person, a human being. Okay, a human, and when I say weak, I mean weak compared to the Almighty. Because we believe that the, the, the messengers were the mightiest people that walked on this earth. So my point to you, brother, is... Okay, okay, I hear what you say. Now, I believe what the scripture says. Jesus humbled himself. Jesus the prophet. Jesus humbled himself, right, to the point of death, right? Knowing that he came from heaven, he came from the Father, and he humbled himself to the point of death, going to the cross, crucifixion. Right, so Jesus now, who is God, because it is written, in the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God, not a God. Where, where do you get your information about Jesus from? Where do you gain the evidences that Jesus was God? Where do you find this information? Okay, right, now, I never used to be like this. I never read the Bible, in fact before I became like this. I never went to church, but I had an encounter with God. God came to me, I used to live in the seventh floor, I rise block of flat. In fact, with the ground floor, it's eighth floor. And God came to me and God asked me a question. God says to me, do you believe 
in the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. I was in tears. I experienced God's presence. I, I replied, yes. At that moment, I experienced the forgiveness of my sins, a peace that I never had before, that the Bible is true, and we are living in the last days. And God revealed to me that the Bible is true. Okay. Now, I find myself going towards the window, seventh floor, but I couldn't stop myself. I was trying to, but God says to me, you're going to be all right. I knew exactly where I was. I knew exactly what was happening, but I had no control. Next moment, I find myself outside the window. I'm hanging on for dear life. Finally, I release my hold. As I'm rapidly falling towards the ground, below is concrete. On the other side is grass verge, because it's the pathway where you walk. As I'm falling, I'm falling in this figure, tall figure, pure white, as tall as the building, but I didn't see her face at that time. As I'm falling, God opened my mouth, and I called out, Ja. As I said that, a voice says to me, you are saved. Supernaturally, God brought me away from the concrete over to the grass verge, we have made a seven inch hole in the grass. I was saying, God is great, God is great. There was a man living on the 12th floor. He heard the impact. There was a woman living in the opposite plot and she saw me when I was falling. There was also a man living be be below me that saw me as I was falling. He's a musician. So what I'm saying today to you, is my own experience how God came to me. Nobody came to me, sat down with me, told me about Christianity, told me about Jesus. I was not looking for God. I used to live for the world, womanize, party, drinking, just doing my own thing. But the Almighty God came and revealed to me that Jesus Christ is God. Jah is Jesus Christ. Yahweh. Okay. It's Jesus Christ. So basically, Yeshua and Mashiach. So basically, Jesus so basically, you said you had this experience. Hallelujah. Okay. And that made you believe. And in, during this experience, you said God told you the that the Bible the is the Word of God. Yes. It's true. The King James Bible. The King. He said the yes. King James he, Word? He, he took me to it. Okay, so yes. he told you that he the showed, King James yes. Version of the showed, Bible yes. is the Word of God, yes. yeah? And, okay. Sorry. So can I just... Yes. You spoke for quite yes. a while, yes. yeah? Sorry, yes. So if it can be proven that there are many things within the King James Ver Bible that didn't exist before, that pretty much most Christian scholars today accept uh, interpolations, additions, subtractions, changes to the Bible, then the vision that you saw could not have been God, right? Would you accept that? No, I disagree. I disagree. I'll tell you why. Because if you go to the Bible, Matthew 28, Matthew 28, verse 19, Jesus spoke to his, his disciples and he says, before he went back to heaven, he says this, he says this, Go into all the world and preach and teach and baptize in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Remember what I said to you earlier on. I said to you, God spoke to me and God asked me a question. If I believe in the Father, Son and Holy Spirit. So now, when I had my experience, I checked it from the Bible. And there it is, Jesus mentioned the Father, the Son and the Spirit. Baby, brother, and he, and he I, didn't the, 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 yeah, yeah, I didn't I'm ask you that question. I didn't ask you that question. No, no, I didn't ask you that I'm question. What was the you, question that I asked you? I'm proving to No, no, brother, what was the question you, I asked you? You're asking me that if, 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 you can, if, if you can prove from what you believe that the Bible is not true. No, no, no. What I said to you was this. I said if it can be manifestly, evidentially proven that there are lots of changes and discrepancies within the Bible and that there is a transition of texts being changed and manipulated, things being fabricated and added and taken away, then all I said to you was this. No, I wouldn't change therefore, my brother, br brother, I therefore, wouldn't change brother, my brother, therefore, that manif that uh, you saying God manifesting himself to you and that vision cannot be true because God doesn't make a mistake. God doesn't tell you the Bible is his words when we can prove that it's actually not his words, right? It is his words because it's, it's, it's proven. My experience is actually proof that the Bible is true. No, that's not proof, brother. It is proof. No. The, I, tell, I, tell, I tell you what would proof would be. I tell you what proof would be, yes? Proof would be that you say to me, look, this is the Bible in the British Library, the Codex Sinaiticus, the oldest complete Bible we have, yes? And this is my King James Version of the Bible, printed just here, okay? And look, they're absolutely identical. And then I would say to you, wow, that's quite amazing. Because that's about 4th century. This is like, you know, you're talking about printed today. 
in the 21st century, but maybe originally printed a few hundred years back, right? And I would say, wow, that's quite extraordinary, right? I would have to look into that. However, we find the exact opposite. So we find that in the most complete Bible that we have here, the Codex Sinaiticus, we find that there are verses that are not in the Bibles that we have today. We find that there are statements, actually, for example, uh, 1 John 5, 7. That's not in the Bible. 1 John 5, 7, okay. right? We find that this was a, a, a note in the margin and the earliest we have it included in the scripture is the 15th century. So what I'm trying to say to you, brother, is this, right? And I'm not trying to attack you here. It's okay. All I'm saying to you is, look, it's great, it's great that you believe in the Creator. It's, it's great that you believe in the Creator. It's great that you believe in the Father. But if you are a true follower of Jesus, a true person who loves Jesus, then I would say to you, do what Jesus did. He worshipped the Father. He kept, he kept the, the Old Testament laws. He never ate swine. He never ate swine. Yes, uh, he was circumcised. So if you truly love Jesus, and you are a true follower of Jesus, I would say worship how he worshipped in the Garden of Gethsemane. How does it show us how he worshipped? He put his face onto the ground. How does it show Moses' worship in the Old Testament? He put his knees and his hands and his face onto the ground and he worshipped his Lord. Do you know how to worship God? Of course, this is how Jesus worshipped. We worship in the same way. No, no, no. no. We would, worship in the same I would, way. I, how will tell you how Jesus worshipped and how you and everybody else and me and all of us are called to, to worship? First of all, God is one. We no believe that. that. We believe that. Okay, I could go further on. But who is that one God? Because you say and you believe there's one God. The devils believe there's one God. Even Satan and the demons believe Of course, there's one of course God. he does. But who is that one God? Of course he does. Now listen to me now. Now, as I says, as you mentioned about worship, this is what Jesus says. God is a spirit. The Father is a spirit. So those that worship God must worship God in spirit and in truth. You get it? To worship God, you have to have the spirit. For God is a spirit. And to worship him in spirit and in truth. So nobody can worship God without the Holy Spirit. For God is a spirit. That's why Jesus says, you must be born again to Nicodemus. He was a Pharisee, a religious man, one that knew the law, very committed to the Jewish religion, but yet he did not know how to worship God and how to get into God's kingdom. So Jesus says, to enter God's kingdom, you must be born again of water. Uh, how, did Moses, how, did, how did Moses okay. pray? How did Moses now pray? You have, yeah, you, now you're going into the Old Testament. No, no, how did Moses pray? How, how yes. Moses prayed. If, 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 thought, if, if this was the only formula, okay. How, okay. Comes, how comes the thousands of Moses prophets that came prophet. before, yeah. they all prophet. prayed like the Muslims pray? Not a prophet. No, no, okay. but you spoke for quite a while, brother, yeah? Look, a, a person who reflects on these things would say that if, if, if this message that the brother is preaching is true, Amen. All of the prophets would have preached the same message, right? They would not have left us confused. They would not have to wait for thousands of years until Jesus, until somehow this formula was now given to human beings, right? So now the point here is this, that if all of the prophets said that your salvation is by worshipping God alone and doing good works and keeping the laws, whatever laws they were given, then this is a consistent message, right? Yeah. So my point to you was, how did Moses worship? How did the followers of Moses spirit worship? How did Abraham they worship? They worship God in spirit. They worship God Almighty, yeah, God is right? Okay. Your, your banner is in the way. Okay. So they all worship God Almighty, right? Yeah. They all submitted to God. So if you are a true follower of Jesus, behave how Jesus behaved, eat how he ate, drink how he drank, be how he was, pray how he prayed, be like him. Now the point I make to a lot of my Christian brothers and sisters is this, and I will finish. If today you saw the prophets walking into the park, all together, let's say the last five prophets, 
including Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, you would not be able to differentiate them. And if you followed them, and you watched how they ate, and what they abstained from, and you, and you followed them, and you saw how they prayed, they would all be identical. They would not be dancing and singing and, ki and making hymns. They never prayed like this. They never prayed like this. They put their faces onto the ground and they worship their Lord. Okay, and if you truly are a follower of Jesus, okay. if you truly are a follower of Jesus, be like Jesus, who only worshiped the Father. I'm going to ask you a question. Okay, you finish? I'm going to ask you a question. Does Muslim pray like Jesus? Yeah, I believe we do, yes. Absolutely. Okay. Jesus prayed to the Father. Do you pray to the Father? Absolutely. We pray only to the Father. Okay. So, God Almighty. So, so therefore, if you pray to the Father and you acknowledge the Father, what you are saying is that he has a son. No, we're not saying that yes, at all. Yes, you are. No. You just said to me that, that you no. pray like Jesus. No. To pray like Jesus is to acknowledge that he's the son of God. Amen. This is nonsense, okay? brother. This is nonsense, it's really. Nonsense. It is. It, Jesus you can't, to the Father. You can't jump from that to that. It's not jumping. Look, it's, if, it's, it's, if, it's, 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 brother, it's, it's the brother, fact. brother, it's brother, look, the reality is this, you yes? Say you you like, said to me, like you said to me, you're a Christian because of this vision. You said to me, you're falling and you gave me the full story of what happened, right? And I said to you, and you said to me that God told you that the King James Version was the God, Word of God. That's what you said to me. I believe it. Right. But when I said to you that there are verses in there that were not there before. I disagree. Uh, but now, now, which you disagree? I disagree, yes. So you believe that all of the verses that are in the King James Version are identical to the Bibles uh, and, the, and the scriptures that were before? Is that what you're what saying? I'm, this is what I'm saying. All scriptures from the Bible yes. is given by God. Inspired by God. Inspired by God. Right. So I am happy with that. Okay. I don't have no doubt. Okay. So now, if there are contradictions, it's still inspired by God? It's, listen, there is no contradiction. It's the word of God. Because the, the, the word of God okay. will edify and direct you in righteousness. So as I says, no Muslims pray like Jesus. Okay. No Muslims. How, how, did, how did Jesus pray? Right. How did Jesus pray? He prayed to the Father. How, how did he do it? Okay. Well, now, you it, say, tell me in the Bible how he shows he prayed. By, by, um, by prostrating. I'm not saying the Bible says no, this. No, no, no. I know how he prayed. The Bible says this. It's not just one way. The Lord didn't pray just one way. You got fixed in your mind one way. Okay. Can, you, you, can, you, can way. you show me, quote me, well, Jesus, can you quote me Jesus praying okay. the way you pray? So, can you do that? So, so Jesus, when Jesus taught his disciples how to pray, does it say he was bending down? He was prostrating? Brother, you missed the point completely. No, you know, you know why you missed the, the point? point? You know why you missed the point? Because what you have to demonstrate to me, because I've demonstrated to you at his time of need, at the time when he was stressed, when he was saying, Father, lift this cup from me, save me from these people. The Bible explicitly tells you how he prayed. It says he puts his face onto the ground and he worshiped his Lord. Do you know what now, hold on a second. It's for you now to demonstrate that Jesus here teaches the disciples to put their hands together like this. And he said, sing these hymns. It's for you to demonstrate that to me. I don't have to demonstrate every time Jesus prayed or every time he taught the disciples how to pray, that that's how he taught him to pray. If you look in the Bible, there's about 20 references of different prophets bowing and putting their hand, face onto the ground and putting their hands onto the ground and worshipping their Lord. 20 references. To the heart. Right? You can be praying, now, bending down, See now, this is the problem, brother. Yeah. This is the problem. Yeah, what I'm saying is this, because you're missing the point. Because you can be praying down, bending your knees, your head to the ground, yes. but still you have no connection with God. Why? Because you have not acknowledged Jesus the Lord, the Lordship of, of Jesus Christ. And therefore, God does not hear you. You're far away okay. from God. But, but, but yet, yes, but, but yet God is near. So it doesn't matter, I can pray, I can go on my knees. Yes. I can bow my head to the ground. Yes, yes. And I, I can not say about Jesus. Yes. Right? And God will not hear me. Yes. Because it says this, every knee shall bow. You can get up now, brother. And you every tongue. You don't have to listen, listen. You don't have to say every, that. Every knee shall bow. Yeah. I bow my knees now to the Lord. Okay. Every knee shall bow and every tongue shall confess 
that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of God the Father. It is the Father's plan that he came in the flesh, that every knee should bow their knees to Jesus and confess he is Lord. That's how we give glory to God, because Jesus is God manifest in the flesh. So basically what you've said to me is that it's no good bowing your face onto the ground if you're not spiritually connected to God Almighty. Yes. But we accept that in Islam. Yes. What Was Jesus spirit... Hold on a second, hold on a second. Was Jesus spiritually connected to God when he was bowing with his face onto the ground? Yes. Was Moses connected to God spiritually when he was yes. bowing his head yes. to the ground? Yes. Were all of the other prophets yes. that are described praying in the same way, yes. were they spiritually connected to the Father? Yes. yes. The God of Israel. They yes. were, yeah? Yes. So what I would say to you, brother, is do that and connect yourself spiritually to the I'm Father. Do both. The Father. Amza, Amza, do Christ. both. I walk and do talk both. And pray do to both. God. I don't have to bow at my knees. Ah, I can talk with, to Hamza, God when no. I'm sitting I'm not Hamza, my name's not Hamza. Uh, are you? Abbas. Abbas, sorry. I'm connected, Abbas, brother. Sorry. I'm Hamza's connected white and ginger. Yeah, yeah, I know. I'm, I'm brown, I'm short, beer. and fat. Hallelujah. Yes. Yeah, Abbas, sorry. The, the Abbas. problem. Jesus the loves you. Brother, go now. brother before, you, before you go, what I'm going to say to you is this. We can quote uh, verses and we can interpret them in a way that we want to interpret them. This is the reality. But you know, in England, I was born here. Are you, I know you might be born here or you might be certainly spent a lot of, you spend a lot of time here, right? Yeah, yeah. We've got a beautiful saying in England, you know? Mm. Actions speak louder than words. Mm. Yeah? I can say, I can be very colorful in, in explaining things, yes? But when I look at the actions of Jesus, mm. worshiping the Father, putting his face onto the ground, circumcised, not eating pork, wearing loose clothing, having a beard, a sunnah of Jesus, a sunnah of uh, an example of Abraham, an example of, of Moses, an example of the Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon all having beards. What does that tell you, brother? It tells you that his words and my words are irrelevant. The actions are important. And if Jesus only ever is depicted praying to the Father, then as a servant of God, as a follower of Jesus, that's what you should do as well. I follow Jesus. Sir. Right, so follow I him. Follow, Jesus. follow him. And Jesus says this. Follow him and pray yeah, how I he prayed him. and pray to the one he prayed to. Yeah. Yeah, and and that is Jesus better for says, you. If you love me, follow me. Don't just say you love ah. him because people say they love Jesus from their mouth. We follow him more than you. Service. We follow but Jesus more than you, brother. Does not follow God because when you love Jesus yeah. totally, and you follow him and you confess who he is. We follow him more than you. And you we pray how he prayed. We don't eat the things he didn't be, eat. Obedient. Yeah, he forbade usury. What does he do when he goes to the do temple? He Lord? throws the table. Do you confess right? Because Lord? he says usury, interest is haram, can forbidden. Say, can you say he's Lord? We abide by that law as well. Can you say Jesus is 